Hello again everybody and welcome back to the channel. You join me here at the new Stuttgart in Microsoft Flight Simulator's World Update 6 uh, made by Gaia Simulations I believe. Really stunning bit of scenery and of course we're on stand preparing for a flight back to Copenhagen and uh, what I wanted to show you guys is a new update to the Simbrief platform which is used for flight planning purposes within Flight Simulation uh, owned by Navigraph and uh, a new feature that Navigraph have actually introduced to the website uh, involving alternate airports so while you're here don't forget to click like and subscribe down below and of course share your thoughts as always in the comments section down below so for this you want to go to the Simbrief website simbrief.com and log in now of course if you have a Navigraph account a uh, ultimate subscription or something like that then you will be able to update the air cycles every month which is what I can do uh, hence why it's shown in green down here and at the moment at the time of recording we're on air cycle 2109 we're preparing for a Scandinavian Airlines flight from Stuttgart to Copenhagen and we've got an alternate there of EKAH uh, we're planning to depart tomorrow at around about 1200 Zulu which is during a huge Copenhagen live event on the VATSIM network uh, which is what I'm going to be taking part in and we're in the CRJ 700 so I've selected the aircraft type profile cost index of 46 and so on and so forth and it's given us a bit of a preliminary route for us to use as well which is really cool and as you can see here on the map we've got a line or our plan route from Stuttgart to Copenhagen with a diversion all the way over here in Denmark at Aarhus so what are these new features then now as we all know we can select and turn on NDBs, VORs and things like that all over the uh, map itself which is a really neat feature but if you go to the alternate airports tab like so you get a number of options and uh, you might need a, a couple of alternates for the arrival now for those of you who like to do oceanic flights this is particularly useful to you guys um, but also those longer sectors mid-range or anything that's taking you across an entire continent this is where something like this comes in really handy as a new feature because if something goes wrong you'll have in the flight plan already your alternate arrival airport your takeoff alternate and your en route alternate so at the very bottom here you'll see takeoff alternate and en route alternate and both of them currently say none now takeoff alternate maximum search distance if you want that to be closer than 420 nautical miles you can put in a value there for say 150 and you can hit find what that's doing is it's telling us if you depart from Stuttgart which is what we're going to do and the weather is okay for departure but too bad for landing it's giving us a alternate option based upon potential weather forecasts to go to Baden-Baden EDSB near Strasbourg now if we increase this to 250 and we hit find again it's also given us EDSB as well as an ideal place to divert should something happen on departure but the weather mean that we can't actually return to the field the closest most suitable option that it's giving us is Karlsruhe Baden-Baden so that's the first new feature the second is en route alternate and you'll see as well by the way guys um, it gives us a range ring around here so it's looking for the range that we've specified 250 nautical miles around the airfield for what is the most suitable alternate diversion after departure return to field airport en route alternate we're going to get the same sort of thing so we hit find no suitable en route alternates found for the specified route and or departure time which is fine because we're either going to divert back or we're going to divert uh, we're going to land as required or divert up to Denmark now what happens if we are going to be doing something like um, KIAD to Heathrow which is something that I'm planning uh, in the near future as well we'll look to do this in the 787 of course so while it's loading all of that up it's obviously a lot for it to load and we select the profile for the 787-10 it's given us an alternate arrival airport of Manchester and there's our route there that it's given us as well uh, via Nat Track Yankee so alternates required we've got uh, Manchester 
and it's analysing that. There you go, it's giving us an alternate route, which is valid for the air rack. And it's giving us green there for that alternate analysis. And uh, we want takeoff alternate and en route alternate for this, because anything can happen. Oceanic, you can see here, we're, this, this is going to cover a huge vast space uh, and a huge distance. So, looking at Washington for departure to begin with, let's hit find, and it's telling us... Oh, well, if you depart Washington and the weather's okay for departure, but something happens and you've got to divert before you go oceanic, then you want to go to JFK as the most suitable nearest airport to our departure airport for a diversion. What about the en route alternate? There you go. It's sending us, if something goes really balmy, there's our range ring, by the way. If something goes really balmy and we've got across the Atlantic and something starts to go wrong our best possible en route alternate is Shannon which is pretty accurate because that's probably what is the most suitable en route alternate for oceanic aircraft coming across the Atlantic towards the UK in real life as well and it will give you the range ring for that as well so some new features on Simbrief that they've introduced in addition to the stuff that I mentioned just the other day in a video as well so Hope you guys have found this really useful. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And of course, let us know what you think in the comments below. If you've got some great tips and you've been working out how to use all these, or the new VOR function that was mentioned the other day, then drop them into the comments down below as well. And be sure to check out my live stream schedule. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching. And if you want to get a Navigraph subscription, head to navigraph.com. Take care.